as Chief of Staff of the 2015 Alert Cadet Challenge, the Lord has allowed me a tremendous privilege to work with some tremendous leadership. People might say, what and why have you chosen to have this position? I didn't choose it. I was asked to take it. <clears throat> but God has given me a burden for the lost. My father and I had a tremendous relationship growing up. It was something that was God-given from when I was in the crib. And at the age of three, I could start going with him on the farm. My relationship with my father. At the age of 12, I made a commitment to Jesus Christ to ask him into my life to be my eternal father. Because of my tremendous relationship with my father, I understood who God was. I want to help other fathers and other sons have that same type of relationship. My family and I served for 20 years as missionaries in Mongolia, just a little bit south of the Siberian border. I had a burden for the lost, but you're dealing with an unreached people group. You're dealing with an area where no one had ever talked to them about Jesus. After being there for 20 years and being able to share the gospel with them, to see some of my friends come to the Lord, many of them never came to the Lord. As we returned here, my heart was still about sharing with father and sons. And so then the Lord opened up the opportunity for me to work with the Alert Cadet Challenge. There was a statement that came into my life several years ago, and it's given me a motivation. It's one of the few statements. There are defining statements that come into your life that affect the direction that you're going. It's called course correcting. The salvation of a soul is the miracle of a moment. The maturing of a saint is the task of a lifetime. The Christian life is not a one-day race. The Christian life is not a one-week race. If you remember right, God's word says our life is but a vapor. There's another portion that says our life is like the breath of a hand. I'm 57 years old. And if all of life is the breath of my hand, I have about that much left. At the best. None of us know how long we'll live. It's what we do with Christ at this point in our life. Today we have a chance to share the gospel with these 300 young boys out there. I've been praying this morning about the salvation of their souls. God is going to give us an opportunity to give an invitation. I don't usually do invitations. These young men's hearts are ready to hear about Jesus. We don't want them to come to this ACC to just have a good time. If we're not concerned about the eternal destiny of their soul, we've missed the mark. Do you understand Romans 3.23? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's actually an archer's term. To come short of. We desperately need Jesus. We are sinners in need of a Savior. Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is eternal death. But God doesn't leave us there. He gives us Romans 10.9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus says, Lord. And believe. That word believe means to rely upon, to trust in, to adhere to. And believe. To believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. That's what the whole thing is about. The salvation of your soul. Acts 4, 7. Excuse me. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We have an eternal God. We're asking for eternal fruit today. Thank you.